My name is Kelly Goodman Schaefer. I'm the President and CEO of the Bedford County Chamber of Commerce and we're very pleased to be here today for a ribbon cutting celebration and open house for the Reynoldsdale State Fish Hatchery which is happening in the 150th year of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. The Chamber is very proud of our relationship with the Reynoldsdale State Fish Hatchery knowing the significant impact that this facility has on local commerce. Not just on tourism um, but also bringing thousands of people into town but also I'm supporting the quality of life by supporting one of the more popular outdoor activities in our county, which of course is fishing and boating. And we all know what quality of life means to economic development. So we're very, very pleased to be here today to help celebrate this occasion. At this time, I would like to invite the Executive Director of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission, Mr. John A. Arway, to make some remarks. Well, thanks everyone. It's uh, really great to see the ni nice turnout and, and um, on a beautiful day. Who would ever thought the, the weather would be like this? It was 32 degrees at my house the other day and, and to have it uh, 75 is just uh, pretty remarkable. But I think it's just a sign of uh, helping us celebrate this glorious event. Um, it, it's, uh, it's a real pleasure for me to be here. I've been uh, traveling around the state. Uh, in fact, I was up in Erie last week celebrating our 150th anniversary, which is the sequestcentennial. I learned that when I uh, tried to figure out what 150 years meant. And um, we've been trying to have special events around the state, and to be able to sync this up with the uh, op reopening of Reynoldsdale and, and uh, to celebrate the uh, time, effort, and, and funds that we put into this facility to keep people fishing in Pennsylvania is pretty special. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Kelly and the Chamber of Commerce for the help with the event and publishing the program. And we continue to emphasize that Fish and Boat Commission and Fishing and Boating in Pennsylvania is big business. Anglers, anglers spend over $1.2 billion a year in Pennsylvania, and uh, a lot of it's on fishing for trout that come out of uh, a lot of our hatcheries. We stock 3.2 million uh, uh, statewide, and, and uh, our cooperative nursery stock another 1 million catchable trout. And a lot of that creates recreation for people to enjoy. And, it's really great to see a table of youngsters there sitting with uh, plastic fish making t-shirts uh, to try to get them engaged in, in fishing and boating. That's really our challenge. It's been very difficult with the transition in society. We started losing licensed anglers in 1990 and we're on a slow rate of decline from one million. One, we, we, uh, we sold over a million licenses, 1.2 million in 1990. We saw about 860,000 today, but estimates we have 1.1 million people in our state that, that fish. And uh, compared to uh, the fact that we have 12.8 million people in the state uh, is our total population, only about 10% of us fish. Uh, so the challenge continues to be to try to expose kids. That's what I tr try to do with, did with my kids and now grandkids, is to just get them outside. And I read an article not long ago called, ago called Fishing Rx, and it's about how you know, getting outside really improves the, uh, your health condition. Uh, it's, it's really a uh, takeoff from Nature Rx. There's a program in the country that talks about how getting outside really is uh, medicine for your health. So I'd like to recognize some special guests. Um, District Commissioner Len Lickbar down here in the front row. Commissioner Rocco Ally, Senators John Eichelberger and uh, John Wozniak, I think is going to join us. And Representative Jesse Topper down here with us. And Commis Commissioner Rocco Ally standing in the back. And then we have former Commissioner Donnie Anderson here. Donnie, raise your hand. He's way in the back. So uh, this is our open house and, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy some of the special activities we have planned and our continued commitment and investment in your community and the future of the Commonwealth's fisheries and, and boating industry. Uh, the, the, I'd like to thank our Fish and Boat Commission family. We have uh, various colors of blue shirts on. Uh, everybody can raise their hand. Uh, you can see who to ask your questions uh, after we, we, uh, we break. Um, and also the dedication they have not only to our mission but also our resource first philosophy. It enables, enables us uh, to accomplish great things with the staff that we have. We're a small agency but we do a lot of things. We do everything from raising trout, catchable trout like here at Re uh, Reynoldsdale, but we also protect, conserve, and enhance our aquatic resources, recognizing they're the building blocks. They're really the foundation of our fishing and boating pro programs in the state so that we can provide fishing and boating opportunities. The better health and quality of our fisheries, the better fishing we have. And I can personally testify in, in my time on this planet, uh, fishing's a lot better today than it was when I was a child. So 
the the I, uh, the, the the challenge for us is to keep keep that momentum, uh, keep making our streams healthy and, and clean, and uh, so we can pass those along to our kids and grandkids. Well, today Reynolds Hill, we're at Reynolds Hill Fish Culture Station, which was Reynolds Hill Fish, Fish Culture Station, but now is our, our state fish hatcheries. It was built in 1928, so it was due for a renovation. Uh, it started out with some outdoor earthen ponds, concrete and earth raceways, and a hatchery building. And today we're here to dedicate 3,200 feet of raceways that will use about 1,000 gallons per minute of water to grow and produce about 200,000 adult trout as well as about 350,000 fingerling trout for our cooperative nurseries to uh, also stock and raise throughout the state. The raceways are full of fish and water for you to see today, and please stop by our visitor center, which draws over 15,000 people every year uh, here to the community. We also want to con uh, um, continue the celebration of our 150th anniversary. It's a pretty special year for us. Uh, about 150 years ago on March 30th, our legislature saw fit uh, to get together in a convention in Harrisburg where they talked about pollution coming off our mountainsides because of the indiscriminate logging that was going on and the sediment that was being eroded by our rainfalls and snow melt into our headwater brook trout streams that was really destroying the capacity of those streams to produce fish. At that time, you could fish and not worry about uh, waterways patrolmen or fish wardens or waterways conservation officers. Uh, and there was no limit on the number of fish you could keep. But because of those kinds of devastations, we had to put krill limits on, on the number of fish you, you could keep. Um, and our still, streams still haven't responded to that devastation that occurred over 150 years ago. We've got streams like Kettle Creek that still wander around in their floodplain because of the unstable nature of the floodplain because of those deposited sediments. And they, were, they also came together to, uh, to, to look at ways to restore American shad in the Susquehanna River. We had a dam, the Columbia Dam on the Susquehanna River. It's low compared to today's standards of the high head hydroelectric dams that we have. Uh, but there was concern about that dam blocking shad migrations that were just tens of thousands of fish that would migrate up from the ocean through the Chesapeake Bay and into the Susquehanna to really provide sustenance for all the communities that are along the river, including Harrisburg and all the way up into New York and all the way up through Lock Haven, Renovo, and up the West Branch. Uh, and then Governor Curtin uh, signed a bill, Public Law 370, that appointed James Worrell as Pennsylvania's first commissioner of fisheries. And he had a, quite a, quite a uh, task because he was the only one in the agency and he had limited funds that the governor provided. And we kind of evolved over time from a one-man operation to a staff with 432. Uh, and we do a variety of different things. We still got the challenges of trying to get Shad back to the Susquehanna. We only passed 34 shad past the upstream dam of York Haven last year. So we continue to work with the hydroelectric uh, projects on the Susquehanna to try to pass more fish around those dams so we get that fishery restored. We also became the, sec the nation's second oldest fish, and wildlife, fish or wildlife agency in the country. Uh, we were only beat by New Hampshire, and I always kid my good friend, Director Glenn Normando from New Hampshire, that if I had a chance to turn back time and change the clock, I'd, 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 uh, I'd have beat them by a day. But uh, I think it's real uh, important and a, a real testament to, to what the philosophy was like 150 years ago and how, and how much we cared about the condition of our fisheries to create an agency to take care of the health and welfare of our fish. And um, we, we're, a lot of people don't understand we, or know, we got our Water Pollution Enforcement Authority that, that is still one of our top priorities for our agency in 1909 when the legislature gave us the enforcement authority to enforce water pollution laws. We proceed e, uh, EPA, DEP, DER, Sanitary Water Board. It came about in 1932. And uh, we still take um, uh, importance in, in, in enforcing our waterways, uh, our water pollution laws. We, uh, I'd, I'd ask you to take a look at some of the information at the variety of boots. It, it, it covers both parts of our mission, both recreation and protection, cons conservation and enhancement. And uh, you'll see that we do everything from habitat improvement projects to try to improve habitat. Tyler Neiman's here from our habitat staff. I uh, kind of learn about some of the things that we're doing with habitat to try to provide better homes for fish and, and streams across our state. Pennsylvania has 86,000 miles of streams and rivers, only second most to Alaska in the terms of the number of miles of streams in the country. So 
We've got a lot of things to take care of with limited staff, and our staff do a tremendous job in both raising and growing fish to create recreational fishery, fishing, but also protecting the fish that are, that, are, that are in the wild. I ask that you have fun today and, and, and enjoy yourself. The weather's perfect. Uh, have a chance to take, stroll around the property if you haven't already. Uh, make yourself a fish t-shirt print uh, and, and uh, really help us uh, celebrate this, this important day. If you have any questions, feel free. I'll be uh, mingling around. Uh, feel free to ask me. If you have any uh, questions, I've got a lot of staff here that have the answers. Um, so so uh, please, uh, I r really appreciate everyone showing up today. And what I'd like to do next is welcome our uh, district commissioner, Len Lickvar, to the podium. Uh, Len's district commissioner for, for the South Central Dis District. Len? Well, good afternoon. Uh, well, I just want to start off with, uh, you know, before I was a commissioner, uh, I heard that Reynoldsdale, the fish hatchery here, was going to be shut down and closed. Uh, after I became a commissioner, I heard rumors to the same effect that this hatchery was not going to survive, be shut down and closed. Uh, even after the money was allocated uh, for the rehab of the hatchery, I heard, no, it's, they're going to take the money, it's going to go someplace else, they'll, they'll close this hatchery. Well, before I was a commissioner, when, while I was, especially while I was a commissioner, I checked with PFB staff on a regular basis because I got a brunt of this because of, of where I am here in this area. And I was told all along that, no, we're going to rehabilitate it, we're going to restructure it, it's going to be better than it ever was, and the money will stay in place. So with all that going on in the background, I just have one thing to tell everybody here. I told you so, okay? <laughs> yeah, all right? I always wanted to say that to somebody, so now I did. I got that out of the way. Uh, and just uh, also as a, uh, you know, I think it's right, well important we can talk about how many fish are raised here and, and all, all that's really good stuff. That's all very important for angling, recreational and economic future uh, of the area here and beyond. But, uh, you know, I'm a resource guy and, uh, you know, the motto of the Fish and Boat Commission is resource first. Well, to me, that's not just a motto, that's a way of life. And I think one of the things we have to note here about the restructuring and the rehab of this hatchery is the uh, updated and the state-of-the-art effluent uh, capacity that we have here to treat the water. Uh, we have a fluctuation system here that I don't know all the details on. I don't know how it all works. I'm not a technical guy, but it protects the water quality. And uh, that's extremely important because that's the most important thing we have is our water quality and the rehab and restructuring of this, this hatchery has now done that as a state-of-the-art. State and I think we've moved 100 years ahead and water quality protection because of this facility. See, Brian, I told you I'd, I'd steal your line. Okay, I was Brian Wisner, but since he didn't get to speak, I thought I'd say it for him, because I think that really sets a tone, and I think that's an extremely important uh, uh, item for everybody to be aware of here. And really, lastly, uh, just want to say to everybody here, the anglers and uh, boaters, uh, young people in particular, uh, no, make no mistake, I'm very happy that this hatchery is here and that we're going to have this to the future, as I said, to enhance our recreational angling opportunities, our economic opportunities that are all derived from that. But I do want to remind you that not far from here, I think twisted around here, but over in that direction, we have waters called Yellow Creek, Potter Creek, Bob's Creek, Three Springs, and over where I live on the other side of that ridge, uh, we have just as many streams that have their hatchery right in the stream called wild trout streams. You know, it was funny, a couple of days ago, a buddy of mine came up to me and he was talking to somebody about uh, trout streams that have natural reproduction. And uh, he said they, they called it, oh, it's, that's, that stream's got that hatchery in it. You know, and first of all, you know, he sort of laughed because they were talking about wild trout streams. And then after we thought about it for a minute, you know, uh, makes sense. We have a lot of waters that have their own hatchery right in them. In fact, we have over 12,000 miles of water in this state that have the hatchery right in them. And a lot of that reproduction is going on right now in the fall. So as, a, as exciting as to see these fish here, I think it's great. I like to see them too. I was walking the raceways. I always like to see fish. But if you get a chance, go check out some of those wild trout streams and see the natural reproduction that goes on in this state. And I think that's our ultimate goal uh, as a resource agency. It's my goal as a resource conservationist to have more of that. Uh, that's a lot less expensive to operate and to run and provides an outstanding recreational opportunity. And I'm very proud of that as much as I am proud of, of, of this location, this facility, and this hatchery. And the very last thing I'll say is, you know, America is already great, but the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission 
has made this hatchery great again. Thank you. Thank you. And we have some local dignitaries here who would like to congratulate the Fish and Boat Commission and the Reynoldsdale State Fish Hatchery today. I think Senator Wozniak has been somewhat delayed, so we're going to begin with Senator John H. Eichelberger, Jr. Good afternoon. It's great to be here and uh, be part of this celebration today. These guys have been working on this for a long time, so I'm glad it, it all came together, and it's beautiful, so they did a great job. Just tell you a couple things about the, how the state views this. First of all, we don't give any tax money to the Fish, Fish and Boat Commission. Everything they do, they generate the, the revenue themselves and uh, through licensing and other things that they do. So they're self-supporting, self-sustaining, and after 150 years, they, they've uh, gained a reputation of, of doing just an outstanding job. In fact, they're rated this past year as the most efficient and effective game or fish agency in the United States of America. I don't think they get enough credit for the good work they do on an everyday basis. They have good people working here. I know at least one of the gentlemen here that's been a, a good guy and helped me out in the past. And uh, they have good people throughout the, throughout the system. So uh, we're proud of what they do, and we're proud of the work they did here in Reynoldsdale. So thank you. Thanks, John, the commissioners, and everybody that's been a, been a support, and the staff here for uh, all the good work they do. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Senator Eichelberger. Next, we have Representative Jesse Topper. Oh, my son's clapping for me? All right, good. <laughs> Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much. And way, great job picking a, a Sunday where the Steelers were on a bye to have this event. That was probably enhanced the turnout. Uh, I apologize uh, in advance. I know some of you come up to me. I've not been in a handshaking mood today. About 5 o'clock in the morning, I was uh, wondering if I was going to be able to make it out of the house today, a little bit under the weather. So I know I'm normally the guy that comes up and shakes hands and slap backs, but today we'll take a little break from that so as not to spread the infection. But I'm glad to be here because I knew my brother-in-law, Scott, who works here, I think he's back flipping the hot dogs right now, probably wasn't going to vote for me if I didn't come. So we want to make sure that uh, we got out. This, this is such a great thing for the community. Uh, the fact that I remember when this started, and, and we got to understand for the guys who work here, how difficult it is to keep a place open and maintain it while it's going, you know, having this kind of renovation done. I mean, that really displaces a lot of folks and I'm sure it was not easy. Uh, they did not complain about it. I'm sure, at least to me, they didn't complain about it. I'm sure there might have been some folks uh, who were frustrated at times because it is a long project, takes a lot of money, a lot of time. But to see it come to fruition, what a great day. And to be able to celebrate that with the community, which this place is such a, a wonderful part of the community, both economically and as a community partner, we're so happy uh, that they're able to be recognized in this way today. My congratulations to John, the staff, the whole crew. Thanks to the chamber, who once again, Kelly and her staff do a great job having these kind of events to facilitate the community being able to come in and express their appreciation for everything that you do. So congratulations. Thank you, Representative Topper. Representing the Bedford County Commissioners today, we have Commissioner Chairman Josh Lang. Well, thanks, Kelly, and uh, it's just a, a blessing to be here today. Uh, I've been to a lot of these uh, ribbon cuttings and these open houses, and uh, it's just remarkable to see the amount of people out here today. Uh, I think that's a that's a testament of your guys' hard work, so I, I thank you for that. And and as Jesse had mentioned, it's it's not easy to get these things up and running. Um, I remember as a kid, actually on a field trip, coming to, to see this, and it was definitely one of the the things that I remember as a kid, and I've been back many times since. So. As a community, I think one of the things that we can really do uh, is helping the Reynoldsdale Fish Hatchery to promote this um, and getting more, more and more young people out uh, to, to see the things that they do, all the programs and all the education that they provide. Uh, I thank you for, for all the economic uh, impacts that you're making here locally and the quality of life that you bring to the community. So uh, congratulations, and I look forward to, to spending the time this afternoon to tour it. So thank you. Thank you. 
Um, the chamber would also like to thank um, manager Harry Wade and all of the staff out here. If you haven't ever had a chance to talk to Harry, he hosts our, our leadership classes um, during their program. And I don't know that we have a better um, ambassador or more passionate person about fish and about Bedford County. So we thank him um, for all of his enthusiasm as well. Um, at this time, we'd like to invite the um, all of the dignitaries up front and we're going to take the ribbon and then or take the, the picture of the ribbon cutting and then we'll begin the open house so thank you all for being here this afternoon